When 2,000 Jihad militiamen attacked my village of Sarah, we Christians were small in number and overwhelmed. I took my mother, wife and two children into the jungle for safety. We became quite fatigued, so we stopped to rest under a big tree. My mother was frightened and she urged us all to pray. I kept praying for God's protection because we sensed we were all going to die at the hands of the Laskar Jihad troops. We then continued on deeper into the jungle. We had been running the jungle for two days. My eight-year-old son Cristianto was hungry and crying for food and water. So my brother-in-law and I left the family to search for some fish at our nearby river. Suddenly out of the foliage, if out of nowhere, a squadron of Jihad troops appeared. I tried to protect my family, but became overwhelmed with the radical Muslims. In the struggle, I was separated from my family. From a distance, I saw them captured and heard my darling 10-year-old daughter, Christina, crying out for help, shouting, Father, help us! But I had no power or strength to ward off the multitude of Jihad soldiers. One of the troops threw a grenade at me, and I ran away, but later fell unconscious down a ravine. When I regained consciousness, I prayed that God would protect my family and give me strength to continue on. I met up with my brother-in-law at nightfall. We managed to return to the scene of my family's capture. It was pitch black and we could see nothing. We began to feel the ground for bodies. To my horror, I discovered the bodies of my mother and mother-in-law. A few feet away, I found the body of my dear eight-year-old son, Cristianto, lying in a pool of blood. Their bodies had been hacked with sabers. I found their Bibles, three of them, near their bodies. All but one had been ripped into pieces, and the pages scattered over their bodies. I cried uncontrollably and asked God to give me extra strength to overcome this tragedy. I believed God still loved me and my family and would never leave us. I remembered the scripture verse that said, if we become followers of Christ, we not only gain salvation and joy, but also the gift of suffering. Maytu's heart ached daily as he searched for clues to discover what had become of his wife Adele and daughter Christina. He agonized over his loss and cried out to God for answers. Because I did not find the bodies of my wife Adele and daughter Christina, I was hopeful they had survived the attack and were still alive. I prayed that God would protect them and reunite us. I prayed daily and believed in God's power to return them to me, in His way and timing, not mine. I never gave up hope. Two months after the attack, one of my friends came to my house. He was excited and said he had good news for me. He had seen Adele and Christina on another island. They had been kidnapped by Laskar Jihad terrorists. Praise God, they were still alive. I took some of my friends and went to that island. There were more than 1,000 Muslim Laskar Jihad troops there. The leader of the Laskar Jihad demanded that we convert to Islam. He said if we did not, we would be killed. He also said I could not get my wife and daughter back unless I became a Muslim. We prayed and afterwards I told the jihadists, even though you want to do bad things to my family, I am a follower of Christ and my faith in Jesus is of much more value than anything you could offer me. It's more precious than gold. Matthew chapter 10 verse 33 came to mind. Jesus said in that verse, if you disown me before men, I will disown you before my Father in heaven. When I turned my back on my wife and daughter and walked away, I still believed God would reunite us someday. Three months later, I was eating lunch with my friend at a small restaurant. I could tell by the look on his face that something was troubling him. He broke the news to me that my wife Adele had been forced to marry a Muslim man. When I heard the news, I cried. But even though my wife had married a Muslim, I still loved her very much. Nearly one year had passed since the attack and my wife's capture. Just before Christmas, I received a letter from Adele. I opened it up and hurt my heart to learn that my wife was forced to service the sexual desires of her Muslim husband and later became pregnant by him. I could not read all the pages of the letter. I was devastated, but I prayed that the Lord would give me strength to face this hurtful reality. Adele wrote that she felt she had become a traitor to me and God, but I didn't view her as a traitor and I knew God would forgive her and reunite us someday. 
After the Laskar Jihad kidnapped me, I married a Muslim man because I had been threatened by the terrorists, not just once, but many times. They used to come to the home where I was being held. The door was locked, but they broke the door and the window opened and forced me to sleep with them. They forced me to marry this one Muslim man. And I became pregnant and gave birth to my daughter, Sarah. If I had refused to marry this man, there was a possibility that all the other Christians being held would have been killed. So I sacrificed my own feelings to save the lives of the others. I still considered Methu as my one true husband, even though I was married to this Muslim man. I still loved Methu and I believed one day in God's time I would be reunited with Methu. I was very ashamed of myself and was scared of being rejected by Methu. I remembered what the pastor said the day we were married in church. He said no one could separate us but God. Only God alone can separate man and woman as husband and wife. I believed in that because it wasn't just the word of the pastor, but the word of God to me and Methu. When I found out I was pregnant, I did everything I could think of to abort the child. I drank poisons and all kinds of pills. I tried to fall on my stomach, but nothing worked. I attempted suicide several times because I did not want to live with the shame of returning to my village with another man's baby. One day, in my deepest despair, I tried to stab my womb to kill myself and the baby. My 10-year-old daughter, Christina, came in the room and stopped me. She held me tight and said, Mom, if you go away, who will take care of me? As we sobbed together, she pleaded with me not to do it. God helped me realize I was wrong. He had a beautiful plan for me and my baby. Adele managed to escape from her captors. God answered my constant prayer and finally reunited me with my wife and new daughter, Sarah. I was later able to rescue my daughter, Christina, from captivity. Adele was afraid that I could no longer love her because she had forcibly married one of her Muslim captors and had his child. But I told her that she could have 100 children by 100 men and she would still be my wife. And I would always love her.